COVID-19 and the cytokine storm. Previously, when I spoke about the immune system, I told you that there is an adapt, innate adaptive immune system with antibodies and white cells, with lymphocytes consisting of one of the components of white cells. And I spoke to you about cytokines, the chemicals that are needed for cells to communicate with each other and to carry out their activities. So when you have a stimulus to a cytokine producing cell, those chemicals are produced and they bind to a receptor on another cell. And those receptors after binding will send a signal to the nucleus and the action is produced. So this is the general pathway for a cytokine to act. There are several cytokines and some of them, the interleukins, you have interleukin 1, 2, 6, 9, etc. Interferon gamma, TNF alpha, and these are the cytokines that are very important in different aspects of medicine. Some cytokines are classified as Th1 cytokine and some in Th2, which I will discuss in a different video. If you look at the issues that occur during COVID-19, some cells are increased, some cells are reduced, as shown the lymphocytes count is reduced, and some cytokines are increased to high levels, such as IL-6, TNF-alpha, etc. And this could lead to a hyperinflammatory condition. So when the lymphocyte reduces, the person can be more prone to getting other infections, such as bacterial infections, fungal infections, etc. The increase in cytokines can produce a cytokine storm with hyperinflammation and effects across different organs, as shown in the slide, the lung, the liver, the kidney, the heart, the brain, etc. So these are the effects that are seen in patients with severe COVID. In addition to the lung, you have effects on the other organs. So if you take a respiratory infection, you find the infection occurring in the lung, different immune cells being produced, and then from those immune cells, cytokines being produced, and the cytokines act on the receptors to produce its action or inflammation. We will concentrate on the cytokine called IL-6, which acts on the IL-6 receptor. We know that the IL-6 cytokine has a whole range of actions, which I won't go into great detail, but just point out to you that that is responsible for the feverish feeling, the fatigue which one has when they get a respiratory tract infection due to a virus, or it, and it also causes an increase in acute phase proteins such as CRP, etc., which we see in the blood test. So when we come back to SARS-CoV-2, we find that the virus comes to the lung. It causes a lot of inflammatory signals. These stimulate the cells to produce more cytokine. And there is a cytokine storm, which ultimately results in multi-organ failure, respiratory distress, and a hyperinflammatory syndrome. So this is the schematic in a different way. The SARS-CoV-2 virus coming in, bind to the receptor, and there is this hyperinflammatory state, a cytokine storm, which affects a whole range of organs, and the person deteriorates from that point. So initially, when the epithelial cells are infected with the virus, it produces cytokines, and it stimulates other cells to produce cytokines, the innate immune cells. These are the first level cytokines. These first level cytokines stimulate the adaptive immune cells to produce more cytokines. So there are second level cytokines and there are these circles or sort of self-perpetuating cycles that go with regards to the cytokine milieu and there is a lot of cytokines circulating in the blood. This schematic will show you the interaction between the adaptive immune system and the innate immune system, where the innate immune cells produce cytokines that stimulate the adaptive immune cells, the different types of T cells, and the different types of T cells in turn produce cytokines that again stimulate the cells of the innate immune system. 
So this crosstalk is very important and this leads to self-perpetuating cycles. As shown in this diagram, what happens is initially you find the macrophages producing a lot of chemicals. These would stimulate the immune cells, which again produce a number of other chemicals. The cells that are infected with the virus die and that stimulates more chemicals or cytokines. And then there is this excessive amounts of cytokines circulating, which can damage different organs of the body. So if you look at the schema take as from the point of the SARS-CoV-2 infection, producing a lung infection, the innate immune system not working too well, as I described previously, there have been a hyperinflammatory state, and then the person getting mild or severe COVID-19. How can we intervene? First, we can prevent the person getting infection with social distancing or using vaccines to prevent them getting infected. Then you can, if they get infected, you can look for the hypercytokine state. And if they develop it, treat it appropriately using medications, which I will describe in a further video. So putting these facts together, you can find that a whole range of different important cytokines are produced in the hyperinflammatory state. These have been listed in the box shown that this includes TNF-alpha, IL-6, and IL-1. We will concentrate on IL-6 because that's an important cytokine that has been targeted in SARS-CoV-2 infection. So if you look at how we could target IL-6, one thing is that we can target the receptor, and that is using monoclonal antibodies, which will, I will describe, and these include tocilizumab as an example. Or you can target the IL-6 itself, and the drugs that are used to target IL-6 itself are listed in the slide. So two ways to target IL-6, either the receptor or the IL-6 itself, and at present, we use a drug called tocilizumab, which targets the receptor. So in summary, the SARS-CoV-2 virus causes lung infection in some uh, intestinal or gastrointestinal infection. This causes increased numbers, amounts of cytokines and chemokines. This in turn produces immune cell activation and more cytokines are produced. If the cytokines and the immune cells are appropriate, then the infection will be resolved. However, if they are not appropriate and there's hyperinflammation, then you would get severe COVID and the downstream effects of this condition. We have drugs that we use, including glucocorticoids, dexamethasone, and a drug called tocilizumab to be able to control this. And in the next video, I will talk about tocilizumab specifically for severe COVID. COVID-19. Thank you very much.